Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the June 2017 International A-Level at Excel C34 paper. This question relates to the new syllabus P4 exam. And this question is about integration by parts. And we're asked to use integration by parts to find the exact value of the integral between the limits of e and 1 of lin x divided by x squared with respect to x, writing the answer in the form a plus b over e, where a and b are integers. Um, so the first thing we check for is, is the denominator, the numerator the, in the form of the differential of the denominator when you have a fraction? Well, it's not. If I differentiate the denominator, get 2x. That's got nothing like it. It looks absolutely nothing like it. So we cannot use the reverse of the chain rule with anything in this case. So now what we're going to do is we're going to, well, in fact, we don't have to, we didn't even have to do that, to be honest. We needed to read the question. It says use integration by parts. So we have to use integration by parts in any case. Right, so integration by parts, you have to have a product of two separate functions. Now, this is a quotient of two separate functions, which can be expressed as a product of two separate functions very easily by writing, um, you know, this as one over x squared, times lin x, in which case this will be x to the power of minus 2 times lin x. So if we write it as x to the power of minus 2 times lin x and integrate that with respect to x between these limits, that's now a product of two separate functions. Now I'm going to show you how to do this using what's called the DI method. All right? And this is one of the cases where the DI method kind of you got to do um, a bit of a combination of the DI method and the normal method right because you'll notice with the di method what we normally have is a case where the the part that you have to differentiate breaks down to zero but in this case we are forced to use lin x as our as our d part because the d integral of uh, lin x we don't have that as one single term anyway so we cannot use the, uh, the lin x as i we have to use the lin x as d whenever lin is there we have to use that as d and some people use this mnemonic late where this stands for things which are in log form, then you have algebraic form, meaning polynomial form, then trigonomic form, then exponential form. I personally don't like to memorize such things because if you do mess up with your memorizing of these letters, you won't know what's happening. So it's better for you to understand how things work. Normally, the differential is the part that breaks down to something simpler easily. And, you know, the only, the only uh, exception to that is when you have lin x, all right, if you have, for example, lin x and x squared, you'd choose lin x for this, where normally you'd have chosen x squared for most things um, because x squared breaks down to something simpler. But lin x, we have to use it. If there's lin, you have to use it as a differential because we don't have an integral of this as one term easily written down. So anyway, lin x is our d and x to the power of minus 2 is our i. So this is the part we have to differentiate and this part we have to integrate. Now what you'll notice is when you differentiate lin x you get 1 over x. So this you have to write plus, minus and then you'll have to alternate normally. So lin x becomes a minus 1 over x and x to the power of minus 2 when you integrate it you have to add 1 to the power becomes x to the power of minus 1 and then you divide by the new power so you end up with minus 1 down there. So if you think about x to the power of minus 1 over minus 1 it's actually minus 1 over x. Okay, minus 1 over x. So I'm just going to replace this with minus 1 over x for now. Okay, which is the same as this. All right? So now, what we're going to do next, because this, if we differentiate any further, it's not going to break down to anything simple. It's not going to become 0. You'll have, this is like minus x to the power of minus 1. So you're going to differentiate. You'll have minus x to the power of minus 2. And then it will continue getting more complex. So we're going to stop here. Okay, and the reason why we're going to stop here, you'll see in a minute. So first of all, with the DI method, we, we multiply across. So I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to multiply this by that term there. So I end up with minus 1 over x times lin x. Right now, when you're multiplying along the same row, it's basically the integral. You're going to integrate. So I'm going to multiply these two together. That gives you plus the integral of... This is 1 over x squared, which gives you x to the power of minus 2. Because minus 1 over x times minus 1 over x is, is 1 over x squared, which is x to the power of minus 2. And we're going to differentiate that with respect to x. So this is where, when you have this not becoming 0, it kind of like is a combination of the di method and the normal method. Right? This would be u, this would be v, this would be du dx, this would be, DV, this would be dv dx, sorry, this would be u dv dx, this would be our uh, dv dx, and that would be our v. So you say u times v minus the integral of v times du, du dx. So this is exactly the same thing. 
So we have to go across this time now. Why? Because we can't really go any further because we will never get a zero here. Okay, if it goes down to zero, it's very easy. You keep going across this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, until you've got to the row that says zero. In this case, it won't get to zero, so you do this. Okay, and this, this actually now will integrate quite easily. So you have, now let's put our limits in of e and 1. So here we have minus 1 over x times lin x. And this, when you integrate it, you add 1 to the power and divide by the new power, you end up with minus 1 over x. Okay, because it becomes x to the power of minus 1 over minus 1, which is 1 over x to the power of 1, which is 1 over x, and it's negative. So you end up with this as your integral. Because we've got limits, we're going to put e in 1 in there. Otherwise, we're going to put plus c. But now we're going to find the exact value, and it should end up in this form, where you have to find what a and b are. So first, we have to substitute e into this. We have minus 1 over e times lin of e minus 1 over e. And take away from that what happens when you substitute 1 in there. So you have minus 1 over 1 times lin 1 minus 1 over 1. Okay, so we know that lin e is 1, so this is minus 1 over e, and you have minus another 1 over e, and you have minus, well this gives you 0, because lin 1 is 0, so you have minus and minus 1, because this is going to be minus 1, alright, so this is going to be 0, and uh, lin 1 is 0. Okay, so now we end up with, here we have the same denominator, so we add the numerators, you have minus 2 over e plus 1. So there's our answer, they want to write it in the form a plus b over e, so we just write it as, 1 minus 2 over e. So there's our answer. It's in the correct form. Okay, where a and b are integers. So we can say a is 1 and b is minus 2. We don't have to write that because it says in this form. It didn't say write down the values of a and b, but write it in the answer. So a is 1 and b is negative 2. And there we have our answers to this question. Okay, so this is an application of um, you know, this DI method, but in this particular case, in these cases, it doesn't seem very much different from the the normal method that we use, UV method, okay, because you, it's, it's basically the same thing. As I said, it's, it's basically the same thing anyway. It's just normally the differentiating part becomes zero. When that becomes zero, then it's just this times this, and plus that times that, plus that times, and you get the answer straight away. But in the cases where it doesn't break down to zero, you have to be a bit more aware and careful about what you're doing because this won't ever get down to zero. It will keep going on. So you have to kind of stop and see what happens next. So it's basically reverting back to the old method when you're doing something involving this lin of x. And there's certain other also examples of that. Okay, so anyway, there's the answer to part two. Question two of this paper, June 2017, C34. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will be linked in the end of the video in this region here. You will see other questions dealing with integration by parts in this section here. Um, you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch a video uh, over here which will tell you how to use my channel in an efficient manner. Thank you for watching and see you soon.